What is going on everyone? It's Mark and I'm back with another video. We had a long weekend here in Alberta. Um, so I was out enjoying the sun. It was super hot um, and I got some pretty cool footage that hopefully you guys will get to see. For today's video, I have a really exciting new product for you guys that will allow you to keyframe your exposure, your contrast, as well as your saturation, which is super handy, especially for a lot of drone footage if you use your auto exposure. Um, and then as you pan down, sometimes you can get some overexposed or underexposed images, depending on your particular movement. And another thing that we can do is a fade to black and white, which is super easy with a few keyframes. So all you just have to do is head over to the selfie link in the description and download this product. And then you're gonna to want to install it by dragging it into your uh, motion templates folder. If you head into your movies, your motion templates, and this one is going to go in your effects folder. So jump into the effects, and then uh, if you unzip the folder in here, it will be MW Correction Tools, and then MW Exposure Correction. And then once it's in there, then you can open up Final Cut and you can use it. So, how I would recommend using this, um, there's two different ways that I find super useful. And we're going to use this shot as an example. So in the shot, I'll let it play for you. It's a drone shot that I took last week, and I pan down as I come forward, and the auto exposure um, overexposes the shot right here. You can look at our Luma fade that we have to the left. Even though it's not peaking over 100, it is still definitely a lot brighter than I would like it to be, especially compared to how the clip started off initially. So it's a pretty cool shot. Uh, I really like it. It's got my friend Eric walking over the bridge. So in order to correct this, we're going to use the MW Exposure Correction tool, drag and drop this over top of our clip. And as you can see, we have three different sliders, one for saturation, one for contrast, and one for our exposure or brightness of the clip. So for this shot, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the beginning before that sort of exposure changes to be about here and then we're going to set a keyframe for our brightness just like so and then I'm going to set another one for our contrast because as you change the brightness usually the contrast is affected as well and it's going to change your shot so now that we added those at the start with the we're just going to scroll over to near the end you can add in multiple keyframes along the way but for the shot, I'm just going to add one right here, for example, as the shot gets overexposed. So I'm going to add keyframes back in there. And then I'm just going to drag the slider down just ever so slightly, just to get a little bit more detail in the highlights. And then I'm going to add in some contrast to it as well. And that's going to help bring some of those highlights back up a little bit and increase the contrast in a shot. So this is very finicky. You can add little amount or a lot um, depending on what your shot looks like, but that should be pretty good as it is. So you hover forward. And then I'm, I'm going to add another one to the end of the shot here and drop the brightness even more. So even on our Luma scope that we have to the left here, it shows that it's very underexposed, but visually it actually looks a lot better. So that's pretty much how we're gonna use that for our exposure. I'll let this render through quickly, just so we can see what the final product looks like. All right, so now if flat is rendered through, we can take a look at our shot. So it just makes for a much more balanced sort of exposure when you get these different changing snares, which I think is super useful. I can play the one before without it, so you can see how it overexposes, just we can compare the two. And as it pans down, it gets very bright. You get a lot of highlights over the track, and especially in the grassy area to the top left, 
but then with it on, it brings it all down and it looks much more balanced, which I think looks really good. The other thing that we can do with this tool is fade in from a black or white shot. So if we re-add this to our clip, what we're gonna do is make a fade to black and white as the shot pans down. So if we keyframe our saturation and our contrast, because we're gonna add in some contrast and then go to the end of our clip here. I'm gonna keyframe the saturation and bring that down so we get a black and white image and then our brightness. I'm gonna keyframe that and then our or a contrast of keyframe to about 40, and then brightness we will just leave for this example. So this, this can be cool because you need to do it as an introduction for a cinematic sequence where you come in from black and white or go into a black and white shot, which could be really cool. So I'll let this render through for a sec, and I'll show you guys what this looks like. Okay, so that's rendered through, let's take a look. I think that gives a pretty dope look. I don't know what you guys think, um, but I hope you guys like this and you can find this tool extremely useful. Head over to the selfie link and pick it up. And I would really appreciate that. Thank you guys so much for all the support and for continuing to watch my videos. I'll see you guys next time.